By the end of this video, you're going to know how to change the default DHCP address on an Ubuntu server 22.04 LTS to a static IP address of your choosing. It's easier than you think, but you need to be careful to follow these steps in order. Let's get started. The first step that we need to do is to start with our Proxmox server and find our running virtual machine. Assuming you've got the QEMU guest agent installed, on the summary screen here, you will see the IP address of the server. Now, if this does not appear for you, then you can go to the console, you can log in, and you can run the IP command to get that information. From our Proxmox, we'll select console, and we'll log in with the username and password that you set during install. It'll log you in. We can do control L to clear the screen and enter the IP space A command. And this is going to get us two pieces of information that we need to record. The first is the IP address, which is displayed right here, 172.16.74.90. And the other one is up a few lines, and it's ENS18, which is the name of our network interface. We'll need this later when we change the configuration file. Let's jump back over to our Windows machine. Okay, assuming you've got the configuration file already, and there will be information on grabbing a copy of that down in the description. We can open up our text editor. In this case, we're going to use VS Codium uh, or Visual Studio Code, rather, because that's what I've got installed on this machine. And as you can see, I have previously opened up this file on this machine. So the key points that we need to change or potentially change are the network interface name, ENS18, <coughs> which in our case is correct. We need to change the IP address to what we want it to be after the changes are made. In this case, I've already made that change, 172.16.74.253. Now, if you're doing this on your own network, make sure that IP address is not being used. There are a number of ways you could do this, but one simple way is to just go to a command prompt and ping that IP address. So if we jump over here, we can say ping 172.16.74.253. And if it just sits here and stares at you, or you get the timed out message, then generally you're going to be good to go. You could have a machine that's powered off. That's normally at that address, but generally you're not going to have a problem. Once the changes are made, we can go ahead and close this file and save it if prompted. But we can't stop here. We need to actually connect to the remote machine and make a couple of changes. So we'll open up our Windows terminal. And our IP address is 90. So we're going to SSH in. SSH, our username, at 172.16.74.90. It's going to be different for you. Hit enter. Enter your password. OK. Control L will clear your screen, just like in the Windows terminal. So now we're going to rename the configuration file. So first thing we need to do is change into the directory that contains that file. CD space slash ETC slash netplan. Do an LS to list your files. And we've got the original configuration file that was set up by the installer. So we're going to rename this. We're going to say sudo because we don't own the file. We're going to say MV space, type a zero, hit tab to complete 
the typing for you and we're going to hit zero again and hit tab it'll type it a second time hit backspace and put a dot bak at the end of the file it'll prompt for your password when you hit enter and we're done with that part just be careful at this stage that you are not changing any other files with the sudo command you've got great power and as they say in spider-man with great power comes great responsibility so don't abuse that we've got a second terminal tab open here on our windows machine and you can see the command we're going to use because i used it on a previous run through of this video so what we need to do is copy our file to that remote server so we're going to use the SCP command, which is secure copy. We're specifying the name of our file and we're specifying the username at the IP address on the remote server colon, and then the complete path to where we want to put that. So if we hit enter, it's going to prompt for our password and it has copied the file. Now, if we switch to the first tab over here, and we're going to just say CD and hit enter and we can do LS and we can see that our file has in fact been copied over to the Linux server. But you might be asking, isn't there a graphical way I can do this same task on a windows machine or a Mac machine or desktop Linux? And yes, you've asked a great question. You can use a tool called FileZilla and we'll look at that at the end of the video. Stay tuned. For now, we're going to come back over here. We're connected to the Linux server still. And we're going to change temporarily to the root user. We're going to say sudo su space hyphen and hit enter. And if we do PWD, you can see that it's moved us to the root home folder. So at this point, what we need to do is change the ownership of our configuration file. As it exists, it will not be owned by the proper user if we moved it to the proper location. So we need to say sudo change ownership, chown root colon root zero one and hit tab. Now, if we do it LS dash LA, we're going to see that our YAML file is now owned by the root user, both the root user and the root group. And finally, we need to move this file over to the proper location. So we're going to say sudo copy cp01 and hit tab slash etc slash net plan with a trailing slash hit enter and that should copy it over you may or may not be prompted for your password depending on if you've used sudo recently now we're going to move to that directory we can do cd space at C net plan hit enter and do an LS and we can see that our original configuration file has in fact been renamed and our new configuration file is there. All right, now we're cooking with fire. It's time to restart the server and reconnect with the new IP address. So we're going to say sudo reboot hit enter. And you can see connection is closed. And if we were to just for grins, say ping the existing IP address, it's going to come back and it's not going to do anything. And we'll eventually say request timed out. So we can hit control C to get out of that. Hit the up arrow twice and put the new ending segment of the IP address in 253 
hit enter and it'll prompt for a password and we're in control L to clear the screen and then IP space a again is going to show that our network interface name here is in fact set to the IP address that we specified and you know it worked because it connected and if it if something went wrong it would have thrown back an error message all right thank you for making it this far in the video this is your bonus tip of the day if you want a graphical way to copy your file over to the server you can use something like filezilla filezilla is a free and open source ftp and scp application runs on linux mac os and windows and so when you have once you have this opened up all you need to do is put in the address of your server 172.16.74.253 uh, is our new server address username password you may want to enter in port 22 and hit quick uh, quick connect it will ask you to accept the fingerprint hit OK and it does in fact show that you're connected to the remote server now if you are relatively new to using Linux this may be your preferred way to copy files back and forth if you have to walk somebody else through a process this might be the way you want to copy files back and forth but as with most things in computers, there's more than one and usually three to a half dozen ways of doing any given task. So while I don't use this on a regular basis, it's good for people to know about, especially if you are working with some less tech savvy people, uh, you can have them use an application like FileZilla to make things a little easier. As a final tip today, I've already thought about a common question that may come in and that is why would you use a static IP address in 2024 instead of setting a DHCP lease in your router or firewall? Well, there could be a few reasons for that. In a home lab situation, it's whatever your preference is, right? They will both accomplish basically the same task. In a business environment, there may be policies in place that dictate to you that you have to use static IP addresses for servers and not rely on DHCP leases. Again, know your environment that you're doing this in. Know that there are multiple ways you can do this. The problem with demonstrating setting a static DHCP lease is that the process is going to be a little bit different for every single router or firewall out there. Whereas doing the process we did today, going from one Ubuntu 2204 server to another, the process can be reproduced. And that in a nutshell is sort of the the reasoning behind doing things the way we did today again in a home lab situation doesn't really make a whole lot of difference it's when you get into business or when you're managing a device for another user or another entity that you will want to weigh the options and decide on the best one in a given situation I want to thank you for making it this far in the video. You should now have an understanding of how to change the IP address on an Ubuntu 2204 machine from DHCP to static. And if you want to get some more information, I've got a couple of videos that you may be interested in and you can see them on your screen now. I'll see you next time.